Good morning, faithful listener. You are listening to the Bible Explained podcast, where the Bible gets explained. So grab your cup of coffee and stay tuned as we read through the book of Numbers. Howdy and good morning. This is Jen here with the Bible Explained podcast. And I have to apologize for those of you who are listening to uh, the early episodes on the YouTube channel. So my internet in my area is down. (laughs) Basically completely. And it has been for some time. So now in order to upload the episodes that I record, I have to go all the way over to my church and upload them from there and it's a huge pain in the neck so i have very limited ability to do stuff at home with the internet like this and it's going to be like this for a few weeks until they can come out and fix it unfortunately and yes you can hear my irritation in my voice with that (laughs) because i've called them so many times and i'm just like can we please expedite this process because i kind of need the internet in order to do my job but they're like no we can't do that So anyway, I have to wait a couple weeks for them to come out and fix my internet. So unfortunately, I can't do a lot with the YouTube channel right now because it just takes too much power, I guess, to upload stuff to YouTube. So that is on hiatus. And some of the other things that I do regarding P40 will be on hiatus for a couple weeks. But thankfully, I can record episodes because that does not take any internet to record the episodes. And then I'll just have to upload them at my church. So anyway, things are going to run smoothly, hopefully for the um, for the podcast, as long as my church continues to get good Internet and I can continue to use it, everything will upload smoothly. So let's go ahead and talk about Numbers chapter 10 verses 1 through 10. We're going to talk about these uh, trumpets here. So go ahead and grab your Bible. I'll be reading out the W.E.B. version. Please feel free to read out the version you prefer to read out of. Unless you're driving, then just go ahead and sit back and listen and keep your eyes on the road. <laughs> And also grab your cup of coffee because it is a sleepy day here. Where I'm at, it is quite rainy and thunderstormy. And for some reason, rain always kind of puts me to sleep. But let's go ahead and read Numbers 10, 1 through 10 today. Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, Make two trumpets of silver. You shall make them of beaten work. You shall use them for the calling of the congregation and for the journeying of the camps. When they blow them, all the congregation shall gather themselves to you at the door of the tent of meeting. If they blow just one, then the princes, the heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves to you. When you blow an alarm, the camps that lie on the east side shall go forward. When you blow an alarm the second time, the camps that lie on the south side shall go forward. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the assembly is to be gathered together, you shall blow but you shall not sound an alarm. The sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow the trumpets. This shall be to you for a statute forever throughout your generations. When you go to war in your land against the adversary who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets. Then you will be remembered before Yahweh, your God, and you will be saved from your enemies. Also in the day of your gladness and in your set feasts and in the beginnings of your months, You shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, and they shall be to you for a memorial before God. I am Yahweh, your God. So this is the making of the silver trumpets. And when I looked up what they would have looked like back in uh, this day, this would have been a super long, thin, straight trumpet that like bows outward at the end like a typical like trumpet head but this would have been like a really long straight trumpet is basically what these would have looked like at least that's what people project that these would have looked like anyway but they were made out of beaten silver and beaten work once again god always required something to be done to the best of a person's ability And that just is very consistent with who God is. Whenever he tells somebody to make something, he expects good quality. He expects it to be done correctly. And he wants it to be done to the best of one's ability. And one cool thing I I think about God is the fact that he has a job for everybody. 
Whether they're an artist, whether they're a music maker, whether they are (laughs) a music maker, a musician, I mean. (laughs) You would think I would know the word musician, considering I also play instruments myself, but I guess I, I don't know that word. He has jobs for everybody. Musicians, artists, builders, mathematicians, uh, people who measure things, calibrators. He has a job for every single person and he expects them to do good work. So a lot of times people tend to think that if you're not in ministry, you're not doing a good work for God. But that's absolutely not true. No matter what career you're a part of, you can do good work for God. And that's pretty consistent with uh, with scripture, really, is that God can call a person no matter what career they are a part of. He can call them to do good work for him. And it doesn't matter what they do as their career. So you don't have to think that you need to change your career in order to please God. If you're not doing like something specifically ministry related, it doesn't matter. God can use you no matter where you're at. So he wants some people, either Moses or Moses's artisans or musicians or something to make these beautiful trumpets out of beaten silver. And they are supposed to be used for many different occasions. And two of them were supposed to be made. One for Eliezer, the high priest's son, and one for Ithamar, the other high priest's son. So two priests were supposed to blow these trumpets, and that was part of their job as well as being priests, was was to blow the trumpets. And they're supposed to blow the trumpets for all sorts of different things. For the congregation having to be gathered together, for the princes of each tribe having to be gathered together, and also for when they journey, for when they have to go and uh, defend themselves, and even for their feasts. The trumpets were meant to be blown during all of these different occasions. And really, these trumpets were just very helpful tools to gather Israel together. First and foremost, when a priest would blow a trumpet, it would get the people's attention. And that was necessary in order for them to organize themselves to move out or to uh, attack or to do anything that they really needed to do. These trumpets were necessary and they were also a signal of war to come. And the fact is, God had told Moses to make these trumpets well before Israel would have to go to war. And when the priests blew the trumpets, that would signal war. And so I don't know um, exactly how the tones of the trumpet would like differentiate depending on like what was happening. Maybe they would do like a really high pitched one for like incoming attacks or something and then like a low pitched one if they have to go out and you know journey or I don't know I I don't know exactly how they would differentiate the tones but it's possible that that's what they did in order to signify different things was to do different tones depending on uh, what exactly was happening in the camp at that time. So that's kind of just how I think of it. Though these trumpets probably did not have very many tones that the priests could work with. (laughs) So these trumpets were not meant for the priests to like showboat their ability to make music because we don't actually know if Eliezer and Ithamar were actually good musicians or not. But these trumpets would have been very basic, most likely in order to just have the priests blow a single note to notify the people of what was happening. There was no showboat, no showboating happening here with uh, the priest's ability to play trumpets. (laughs) So basically, I would guess anybody could play these trumpets, but they were specifically meant for the priests to be able to do it. And the priests were the leaders, don't forget. So the leaders were the ones that had the trumpets and were leading the people with those trumpets. And this is how the entire congregation of Israel would be able to differentiate what was happening in the camp. Similar to like an old fashioned church bell, I would guess. You know how uh, if you see like an old church in your area, they often have like a bell tower that was meant to tell the time to the like the surrounding area. We have a bell tower actually in my town square here. And uh, yeah, the the bell I don't think rings anymore. At least I can't hear it. 
<laughs> but uh, the bell tower was meant to tell time a uh, hundred years ago or more in order to tell the people what time it was and to notify them of church starting and weddings and funerals and whatever else was going on. So it'd be similar to that, I would guess, was these trumpets. But the cool thing about them is actually right here in verse 9. When you go to war in your land against the adversary who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpet. So yeah, that clearly means that there were different tones to this trumpet. One of the tones would be an alarm tone with the trumpet. But then here's what God says. Then you will be remembered before Yahweh, your God, and you will be saved from your enemies. I think this is cool because this is proving that not only is the entire congregation of Israel listening to these trumpets, but God also is. God hears everything and he's listening to the trumpets. So when God hears the alarm of the trumpets sounding, he's going to remember his people. He's going to remember his covenant with his people, and he's going to help them during that time of war. So this could just be chalked up to the fact that God is always listening. He always hears us. He hears our cries, our prayers. And I mean, one trumpet blast is not that loud. Like, sure, an entire congregation of Israel might be able to hear it. Maybe the people on the outskirts might not. But for the most part, the congregation could hear it. But if somebody sounded a trumpet a few miles away from me, there's no way I would be able to hear that. Probably. Maybe. But likely, I would not be able to hear it. But the fact is, God could hear it. He was listening for it, just as the people were. So really, this was a reminder to the people that when they heard that trumpet sound, God was also listening. God was there. God would hear the trumpet and he would be with his people. So in a strange sense, even though it was a call of war when this happened, it was also a comfort because yes, war was coming, but God was listening and he was going to be with his people during that time of war. There's actually a quote I heard a while back that I, f I found really good. And the quote was, just because Jesus is in the boat with you, it doesn't mean that the storm is not going to come. But it does mean that the storm is not going to capsize your boat. And I really like that quote because it really shows how God works. God allows hard stuff to come. He allows trials to come because we live here on earth. And unfortunately, we're the one that created the problems that we have. And God allows them to come because they grow us. They help us trust in him more. But we aren't going to be overtaken by those trials and every other kind of crap that we have to deal with on earth. We're just not going to be overtaken by it if we have God on our side. And if we're if we have faith in God and if we believe in God, God is not going to let those trials drown us. There's a song I really like called um, My Feet Are on the Rock. I don't know if you guys know it. And it's just a really great song because it says, when the rains come, I'm going to dance in the rain because my feet are on the rock. I have a solid foundation. And I just love that song. It's a really great song if you haven't heard it. It just shows how God is here. He's with us. Even when storms come our way, God is going to be there with us. He's going to help us through them. And he's going to protect us through them. But he doesn't always stop the storm from coming. Even right here. God is very consistent with that, actually. From the very beginning of time, he does not stop the storm from coming. But he does stop the storm from overtaking you. He protects you through it. So then here in verse 10, also in the day of your gladness and in your set feasts and in the beginning of your months, you shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, and they shall be to you a memorial before your God. I am Yahweh, your God. So the trumpets weren't always a negative thing. They were for the happy times too. When a feast happened or when a new moon uh, festival happened, then the priests would blow the trumpets to signify that a happy day was coming and God would hear that too. It wasn't all about war and uh, discomfort. Sometimes it was about gladness and happiness and God would be there 
during those times as well. God is with you no matter what, in the good times and in the bad. He's always there. And so, yeah, I mean, these trumpets, God would hear them. It didn't matter what was happening. It didn't matter if it was war or peacetime. God would be there and he would be protecting his people whenever he heard those trumpets sound. And really, the moral of the story, even though we're talking about trumpets here back in the Old Testament, I think the moral here is just remembering that God is always with us. He always hears us, no matter what. And we can rely on that. We can rely on the fact that God never leaves us. Well, faithful listeners, today we talked about the trumpets and how God is always with us and how he never leaves us nor forsakes us, no matter what we are going through, even if we feel like he's not there, even though those trials are happening, it doesn't matter. God is, in fact, there and he's going to help you through it. And I truly believe that because that is consistent with God's character. So remember that going forward today in your day. And also, guys, join me tomorrow for an episode out of Luke And also go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash P40 Ministries. And you can like that. And I, I do some different things on the Facebook page as well and keep you guys updated with everything. So anyway, guys, have just a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you bright and early for an episode out of Luke. Happy listening and God bless.